It's Chris with Acton Creative, and this is a handwoven experience, episode 60. And in this episode, I'm talking about the weaving shed. Nope, not the kind of shed that you're going to store your riding lawnmower in. In this case, shed refers to the space in between your warp yarns when they're separated on the loom. This is that little tunnel you're going to use as you send your shuttle back and forth. This is the shed space here or the shed either way. Now let's talk how about how you make a shed. I am working on a jack loom and the way the loom is designed when I push my foot on a treadle down below it lifts see that it lifts certain yarns and others stay stationary. So that is the motion, it's called a rising shed. Seems logical, right? But not all looms are set up like this. There's a loom called a counterbalance that does just the opposite. So when you put your foot on the treadle and you wanna make a shed, it drops the yarns. That's called a sinking shed. Now you're thinking, what difference does it make? Well, it'll make a difference when you are reading a weaving pattern and you're looking at the tie-ups, they will indicate different things if it's if the yarn is dropping or if it's rising. So just pay attention there as you're looking at your weaving pattern. See if you can find information about if it's written for a jack loom or a counterbalance, which will say a rising shed or a sinking shed is typically the terminology they will use. Couple other things for you. First of all, you might have heard a weaver say they're clearing the shed. Have you heard that phrase? What that means is that say you have just forwarded your project and you see someone just take the beater bar, move it forward and back. That motion, just moving the beater bar, can be called clearing the shed. And what you're doing there is you're actually making sure that your weft yarns are organized, that you don't have any kind of random things happening in the shed, that everything is kind of where it's supposed to be. But you can whip out that phrase the next uh, trivia night, just in case anyone hasn't heard that. Clearing the shed, you can use that one. The other thing that I wanna point out is that when you are shopping around for looms, if at all possible, sit down the loom and give it a try. Because I've worked on a number of looms in the past and they all have a different height for their shed space depending on how the loom is designed and it can be kind of frustrating if your loom creates a really short shed space and your shuttle you struggle to move it through each pass so just be aware of that that not all looms are created the same which seems like a really obvious statement but that is gonna be important when you're purchasing a loom. You wanna make sure that it's comfortable for you and the kind of shuttles that you use. So if at all possible, see if you can take it for a little test run and uh, be sure to check out what your shed space is on that particular loom. And I think that will do it. That is the little tip of the iceberg on the topic of a weaving shed. There's so much more, but my goal was to just give you a little introduction and make sure that you're comfortable with the terminology and what that means for you as you're doing your weaving project. So have a fabulous week, my friends. Go forth and do all kinds of creative things. And of course, happy weaving.